trees in the tent, Taylor. You've been in here before. You know there were no trees in the tent at all. In fact, it is a treeless environment. But what we have got here is a little grasshopper. Probably a form of Theracles. A young Theracles, perhaps. But let me show you what I found it on. Isn't it just amazing? It was on Plumbago. Very beautiful flower behind which I'm now hiding. Yes, and we will microscope all of this stuff, of course. But I just think that this special grasshopper, we've identified a lot of grasshoppers over the last few days. And I'm not entirely sure what this one is, but perhaps a form of Theracles. Now, let's put him underneath the microscope. <laughs> Wait. Wait, Kirsten, wait. Yes, it's going to be a long wait. How cool is that? Unfortunately, the lighting is not fantastic. Let me try and change that slightly. There we go. Now, he's just sitting here. I think that he probably is in devourer of um, plumbago of some sort. But I'm not sure how or which part of the plant he eats. Just come back to me, Kirsten. I'm just going to try and fix the exposure by putting something behind him. Like me. Ah, there we go. That's much better. There we go. That's a lovely colour. Let's just move it around the front of him now. There we go. He's just cleaning his face because he now knows he's on television. And, oh wow, look at his mouth parts. This would be wonderful on television, I think. We're definitely going to have to try and do this. Like he knows something's up. Oh, he's wonderful, isn't he great? Now that's a sort of chomping mechanism he has on the front of his face there. That's like his sort of mouth, his teeth. And I think that sort of plate that comes down sort of centrally there is probably like a great big tooth that he uses to chomp away, to scrape away. They will eat along the edge of a leaf, and that will scrape off bits of leaf. And then with those other bits, he will scrape them into his mouth and down into his belly. And look at his little feelers. Yes, and Daniel, of course, the obvious thing to say here is, what big eyes you have. Well, indeed, he does have big eyes. He's not a predator, though. So they're not very much there to see you better, Daniel, but to see the things that are going to come and eat him. And Daniel, I'm going to assume that you do not eat these things. And our Lara Moore, this is something that I've started to notice as well. You say that he's got short antenna. I think that you find, our Lara Moore, that most grasshoppers have got short antenna. Most locusts, they don't seem to have the long antenna. They always look outlandishly small, though, don't they? They look like they've been sort of um, chopped off by mistake. And this guy is now cleaning his foot with his mouth. I hope that he's washed his feet, because that can be very unhealthy. One doesn't like to lick one's own toes. It's a little bit disgusting. Let's just have a look at his amazing back legs. <laughs> Sorry, a bit of trouble with the focus. Let's just do that. <sighs> look at that. And those, of course, the instruments with which he attracts his ladies. Now, this is a young grasshopper, and I know that because his wings are not developed properly yet. And so although he's got those spines on his back legs, he won't be doing a huge amount of violin playing or stridulating. And James, I think probably to a certain extent, you say, are those hairs on the back legs there for sensory purpose? 
Yes, I think there probably are. There you can see them there. I suspect they are. I'm not sure how sensitive they are, but I imagine they probably are there for sensory purposes. Then I wanted to show you, you see how he's, you can see him either, it's either his little rudimentary heart beating or his digestive tract that is doing some work there. You can see that. <laughs> Let's go back to his face. I think this creature could easily pose for very gorgeous sort of photographs put on your wall. Especially with my hairs sticking out the top right hand side of the picture. Very nice. Right, well, I think we'll put him back on his plant now. I think that was very cool. And then let's put him on here. Well, let's look at here first. Polly, you said something about the eyes. What was that? Oh, do they do anything, the colours in his eyes? I don't know. I imagine they must have some function. I think probably what they do is avoid reflecting too much light, so he's quite difficult to see for his p potential predators, which would almost certainly be birds. Um, it, well, lizards would eat him, certainly. Um, I, you know, a grasshopper like this without any form of defensive mechanism would, I suspect, uh, be sort of fair game and easy prey for any number of animals. Okay, let's see. Oh dear. I'm having trouble with my microscope today, sorry, Ferg. It seems that I have trouble with my microscope every day, doesn't it, Kirsten? She says it does, obviously. Still having trouble. <laughs> 